parable is told of two men who went to the temple to pray in order to please God. One was a Pharisee who was religionist and the other was a tax collector who was a sinner. And this is what the Bible says in this parable. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, the robbers, the evildoers, the adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus says, I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. So the Bible is very clear. One man prayed about himself, and the other man sought God's mercy. Why was one man's prayer heard, and the other person's prayer not justified? This morning I want to speak to you on spiritual pride and I want to call my message the danger of applauding your own speech. The danger of applauding your own speech. A turtle once wanted to spend winter in Florida but he knew he could never walk that far. He convinced a couple of geese to help him each taking one end of a piece of rope while he clamped his vise-like jaws in the center. The flight went fine until someone on the ground looked up in admiration and asked, Who in the world thought of that? Unable to resist the chance to take the credit, the turtle opened his mouth to shout, I did, I did. From this story you will learn that you will do more damage to your spiritual life because of your spiritual pride. King Canute ruled over Denmark, Norway and England more than 1000 years ago. A wise ruler, he worked diligently to make the lives of his subjects better. As is often the case, he was surrounded by those who sought to gain influence and prominence with him. And according to the ancient story, he grew tired of their continual flattery and he determined to put an end to it. He ordered that his throne be carried out to the seashore and gathered his courtiers about it. By the sea, the king commanded the tide not to come in. Yet soon the waters were lapping around his legs as the tide did not heed him. According to one historian's account, King Canute rose up from his throne and said, Let all men know how empty and worthless is the power of kings, for there is none worthy of the name but he whom heaven, earth and the sea obey by eternal laws. This parable is so powerful because it teaches us to keep away from this superiority complex because this manifests in the inability to work with or accommodate those lower to one because of one's grace, anointing or divine endowment. Even in Romans chapter 14 verse 10, the Bible says, why do you look down on another Christian? Remember, each of us will stand personally before the judgment seat of God. You know, the Bible likens the body of Christ to the human body where there are different parts, both small and big, and each performing different functions for the good of the entire body. No part can do without the other parts. The Bible also says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 22 and 23, in fact, some of the parts that seem weakest and least important are really the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. It is a sin to look down on anyone, either a Christian or non-Christian, because we need each other and one another. The Bible also says in Job 36 verse 5 that God is mighty, yet He does not despise anyone. If God, as great as He is, doesn't despise anyone, who are you to despise anyone? Did you know that even Moses made a huge blunder in his ministry because of spiritual pride. At a time in his life, he manifested some element of spiritual pride in response to the provocative behavior of the Israelites he was leading. Moses forgot that God and not him gave the Israelites water from the rock to drink. He struck the rock twice when he was only supposed to speak to it. Moses in particular should have known better 
considering the intimacy he enjoyed with God. How dare he say, must we bring water for you out of this rock? So was Moses together with Aaron responsible for bringing out water from the rock? No, it was God. Both the first time in Exodus 17, 5-7, when God asked him to strike the rock and he did on this occasion, and also the second time where Moses and Aaron were trying to take credit for giving the people water and not God. I want to give you two reasons why spiritual pride is dangerous, why it is dangerous to applaud your own speech. Number one, it affects the authenticity of your Christian life. It affects the authenticity of your Christian life. Did you know that spiritual pride leads to hypocrisy instead of authentic living? Matthew 23, 5 says, everything they do is done for men to see. Talking about the Pharisees. You know, sometimes we have to let go of all pretense and live genuine, authentic lives. You know, it's like lying about your gas mileage. You might look good in front of others, but it doesn't help when you have to pay at the pump. The second danger of spiritual pride is that love is replaced with a judgmental spirit. Love is replaced with a judgmental spirit. 1 Corinthians 8, 1 says, Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. R.T. Kendall says, Pride makes us feel worthy to judge another. Sometimes I think, how can we love someone when we are so busy and focused on judging them? Spiritual pride has this flaw where it replaces love with a judgmental spirit. Spiritual pride is dangerous because it replaces love with a judgmental spirit and not only that, it leads to people comparing themselves with others. You know, a minister of God may compare himself with another minister or a Christian with another. You know, they feel they're more righteous, more spiritual, holier, more anointed and more prayerful. In this parable, we see the proud Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I'm not a sinner like everyone else, especially like the tax collector over there. For I never cheat, I don't sin, I don't commit adultery, I fast twice a week and give you a tenth of my income. You know, comparing yourself with others is not the spirit of the kingdom of God. Everybody is to run the race set before him. That's what the Bible tells me. Oh, don't worry. I wouldn't dare say that I am as wonderful as these other men who tell you how important they are, but they are only comparing themselves with each other and measuring themselves by themselves. What foolishness. Comparing yourselves with others is not wise and it stems from a place where you allow spiritual pride to rule your hearts. I believe that the higher we go, the more humility we need. When I think about Herod, he died a mysterious death for acknowledging the flattery that his voice was the voice of God and not that of man. An angel of the Lord, the Bible says in Acts 12, 22 and 23, struck him, worms ate him and he died. Never accept people's flattery. Don't believe people's words intended to give you a larger than life figure, but always accept honor with humility. You know, I heard the story about a self-righteous man who once boasted to a Christian friend of his, you know, John, I'm not such a bad fellow. There are many worse than I. His friend replied, Iber, you are measuring yourself by the wrong standard. You measure yourself by the harlots and drunkards you see on Skid Row and you feel quite satisfied by comparison. But why don't you go and measure yourself alongside Jesus Christ and see how you make up. No person's life cuts much of a figure when placed alongside the perfect life of Christ. The life of the Lord Jesus shows us how crooked and defiled our own lives are. It is no wonder God says there is none righteous, no, not one. But let me also tell you folks this morning that there is something called a healthy pride. You know, one of the things we can learn from God's word is that there is a thing called healthy pride. There is a place for boasting and there is a place for healthy pride in yourself. What am I talking about? The Bible tells me that the proper place for boasting is not in ourselves, but in the Lord. You know, we read in Jeremiah 9, let not the wise man boast of his wisdom or the strong man boast of his strength or the rich man boast of his riches, but let him who boasts boast about this, that he understands and knows me that I am the Lord. The Bible also tells me in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17, or as Paul puts it, he says, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. So in order for us to stay away from spiritual pride, we must live a life that consistently considers the cross and our salvation. That consistently considers the cross and our salvation. You know, Paul also says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 14, consider the cross, the apostle Paul wrote, may I never boast except 
in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because there is no room for boasting at the cross. D. Martin Lloyd-Jones wrote, There is only one thing I know of that crushes me to the ground and humiliates me to the dust. And that is to look at the Son of God and especially contemplate the cross. John Stott writes, Every time we look at the cross, Christ seems to be saying to us, I am here because of you. Nothing in history or in the universe cuts us down to size like the cross. You know, Ephesians 2, 8-9 also tells me, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by a work, so that no one can boast. What is that verse telling us? That you are saved by nothing you have done, but simply by God's grace. I personally believe that we have to follow humble Paul. You know, after many years of great exploits in the faith, Paul remained a humble person whose confidence continued to be God, whose confidence continued to be God, whose confidence continued to be God. Hear what he said, Brethren, I could not myself yet have laid hold, but one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind and stretching forward to the things which are before. I press on toward the goal and to the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as are perfect be thus minded, and if in anything ye are otherwise minded, this also shall God reveal unto you. You know, if Paul had been like many ministers of God today, he would have been so full of himself blowing his own trumpet. But Paul didn't. He said, if I must boast, I would rather boast about the things that show how weak I am. Did you see that? Is that what you do? Or do you present yourself as a superman? You know, Paul means little or small. And like his name, he remained a little man throughout his life and ministry. A small man. He called himself the least of the apostles. Look at what he says in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles and I am not worthy to be called an apostle after the way I persecute the church of God. You see, Paul would not boast about himself or his exploits. Rather, he chose to boast in Christ. So from this message, it is very clear that it is dangerous to applaud your own speech. Why? Because number one, it affects the authenticity of your Christian life. And number two, it replaces love with a judgmental spirit. Instead, consider the cross and salvation as you live out your Christian life. I want to close with the words of Andrew Murray, who once said, it is pride that made redemption needful. And it is from that pride above everything else that we need to be redeemed. Stay blessed and have a great weekend.